Hi, my name is Brian Davis, the amateur cook with time on his hands, and welcome back to Lockdown Kitchen. Um, yesterday we made the Indian fish curry, and I said today I was going to share with you my chapati recipe. It took me a long time to be able to make a reasonable chapati. For ages it seemed I'd, I'd just make them and they'd always be not nice and soft. Finally I've cracked it. So I'll share with you my method this evening. So hopefully you can try them and make nice chapatis as well. Right, we're gonna to start to make our dough for the chapati now. I'll just go through what ingredients I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use one cup of plain or all-purpose flour. Um, one cup of atta with multigrains. Atta is, is, is just wheat flour. Um, there's a brand that I use that I managed to find locally, which comes with about 90% wheat flour, and the other 10% is soya, chickpea, oat, maize, fillets, fillets and husk. So I, I, like, I like the taste of that. And a lot, a lot of people make chapati just with wheat flour. I mix it with the maize flour because we can get a softer chapati. So I'll mix those in. Then, this is what's not normally done. I've got half a spoon of salt, half a spoon of black pepper, and a spoon of onion powder, just to give the chapati a nice, a nice taste. We mix those in. Then what I do, I use two tablespoons of canola oil. Just mix that all in. Then I'm going to add my water. I'm using boiling water, or just it's just off the boil, and I find one and a quarter cups normally does it. Once we've got the dough mixed, we can adjust either with more water or by adding a little bit more flour. And then what I do, I just mix this using the silicon spatula. Pushing the flour and the water together until it's cool enough for me to get my hands in. You could put this in a, a mixer and use a dough hook. That would work much better, but I don't have a mixer with a dough hook. I think I can start using my hands now. Yeah, it's cooled down enough. So I just want to knead it, get it fully mixed in. Okay, that's my dough. I'm going to put it into a ball, and then I'm going to leave it for an hour. You can leave it overnight if you wish, but it definitely needs around an hour just to relax. And then we'll come back, we'll roll out the chapatis. Okay, this has just been over an hour. So now we're gonna roll out. A little trick that I do, so I can get them about the right size every time, is wet, wet out balls about 60 grams each. And that means they nearly all come out the same size. There you can see we've got nine chapatis now, ready to be rolled out. So I'll just move these over there. What I do, as I get them and then I squeeze them and I start to put them to make it to like a round shape. Then what I do is I put them into some flour like that. Now I'm not very good at getting them round. I will show you a little tip if you want round ones every time. But what I do is just start rolling out. Just lift that off and you've got a, a round chapati. I'm just going to get the tower set up and we'll come back and cook this one. Welcome back. I've got my tower heating up. It's a flat plate specially designed for cooking chapatis, flatbreads, etc. Go straight on. I turn it around. As you'll see, they cook very fast. You can see my round circles gone when I picked it up. It moved 
out of it. I've also made like little um, flat donuts with all my balls, so I've just got them ready, easy to round, to roll out and cook. Because as you see, you roll them out, cook, it's a continuous. I'm just doing this one first to show you. Just flip it and turn it round. And what I'll do as I cook them, I'll put them inside there with the cover on, and that'll keep them nice and warm and soft. Oops. One side done, and that's our first one done. In there, cover up nice and warm. There we go. The taste of these chapatis is really nice because we put that bit of salt in, some black pepper, and that spoon of onion powder. Just adding, spicing up the flour, it makes them much more tasty. And there it is, our last chapati. Obviously, we would like to eat them straight away. But these do store well in the fridge. If you just fold them in half like that, layer them up like that, and keep them in foil, you'll find the next day you can microwave them and they're still nice and soft. You could also freeze them. Okay, here we go, time for the taste. Nice and soft, good texture there. Mmm, you can smell the onion. Mm. They get better every time I do them. So remember, season your flour, mix wheat and normal all-purpose flour, use hot water, a little bit of oil, and you should be able to make them as easy as I can. My name's Brian Davis. Thanks for watching Lockdown Kitchen. See you next time.